The very first time I had the encounter with the Lord, I did not think I would get to this point of clearing up my entire Instagram and even sharing my testimony. Michelle. I know you are a familiar face in the Kenyan scene, <laughs> but I want you to introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and what you do. Um, my name is Michelle Talami. I am a renowned businesswoman and entrepreneur. I'm in the beauty space. I am the founder of a hair care and body care line called Marini Naturals, an award-winning hair care line. Um, that was actually the first natural hair care line uh, that was founded in... Um, in 2014 mm -hmm. so that's what i do mm -hmm. and i want us to go back to the very beginning who was michelle as a young girl what are what are some of your fondest memories i'm the last one of a family of six we have four children i'm the last one so i have two brothers and a sister and some of my fondest memories both good and bad um I think every every African child has gone through the road processes, you know, spare the road, spoil the child. Everyone has gone through that. My father was quite strict, my late father, but we were very close. I loved him so much. Um, his, he, his name is Edwin Talami, the late. And of course, I remember times when he was upset and he would really discipline us. And he would actually base it on scripture. Um, you know, because there's a scripture, there's a Bible verse that says, if you spare the road, then you you know, you lead your, your children to distraction. Um, so that's one of the things I remember. But most of my childhood memories are very beautiful. I recall growing up in a very loving home. Um, my parents really provided for us as much as could. We never really lacked for anything. And I thank God for that. We had a great ed education. I have had a great education and Generally, growing up was amazing. Okay. And the big conversation day when your name comes up is Michelle getting saved. I want you to take us back to your life. How was it before salvation? So, one very important thing is I grew up Catholic. Um, my dad was a, quite a, a staunch Catholic, so that's how I grew up. And I went to all Catholic schools. So from literally kindergarten, I was in Flora Nursery School. And then I moved on to um, Loreto Convent Valley Road, LCVR. And then Consolata Primary School. And then high school, Loreto Limuru. So you can see it's all Loreto. It's all Catholic. So I really grew up rooted in the Catholic faith. Um, and at some point, for me, I lost sight of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Even if I'm rooted in the Catholic faith and in God, Christ was not at the center for my life. So everything I was doing was just based on the Lord, God, you know. So at some point I lost my path in terms of, because I believe now that I've come to Christ, I believe if you do not have Jesus at the center of your life, then you will lose your path, mm -hmm. irrespective of... Of anything and can you give us examples of how that manifested itself what are those decisions that you made that made you feel like I lived this life but this was not how it was supposed to be I think just um, getting influenced by the world first of all by myself thinking that I can do everything by my own strength so um, and naturally when you do that then you're driven by your sinful self by your fleshly desires whatever those may be so just being influenced by my sinful nature or by myself and in today's society we have this this um self gratification that that is really preached which is wrong you know self-love self-confidence um just basically like the god self like you're a god self and 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 i lived that I actually lived like you are your own savior you know, and you're not really. Jesus Christ is your savior. But for a long time, because Christ was not at the center, it's Michelle who was saving herself or who was doing life in her own strength. Mm -hmm. So that's, once you, you, you're you influenced by yourself or by the world or by the enemy, then you will definitely go into paths that are not meant for you. Mm -hmm. And people deal with trauma differently. In the YouTube video, you mentioned that you went through some period where you were going through a lot, you were going through, you didn't know what, to, it was chaotic for you. 
give us example of such uh, experience that you you had to endure one of the things is when i really started living life as a young adult um that's when i started to lose my path so as a child living with my parents i was so well protected and so well taken care of uh, up until my teenage years until about 22 i'd say so when i started for me my 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 traumas yeah my, my thorn in the flesh everybody in this life is going to experience some kind of suffering yeah even paul in the bible True. was experiencing pain and he asked the lord please remove this thorn in the flesh from me and the lord said said my grace is sufficient for you so for me my thorn in the flesh was 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 pain and um painful experiences from human beings generally um whether it's all all connections of human beings maybe relatives, friendships, um, relationships, partners, business deals. So that's what caused, started causing pain in my life. Not, you know, for somebody else, it could be maybe childhood trauma. Maybe they were abused. Um, for someone, it could be maybe molestation, you know. What was your most painful experience? I can't really um, single out one, to be honest. <laughs> um, there are a number, but I can't really say because they all hurt differently. They all they, they're all painful in their own different ways. So I can't really single out this or this or that uh, because the way, for instance, a friend will hurt you is going to feel very different from how maybe a sister would hurt you, but the pain is still the same. It's still it's different, but it's um, both hurt. Yeah, and sometimes people do terrible things as a way of coping. Mm. with the pain with the heart how mm. did you deal with yours before christ yes before christ <sighs> well one thing i would i would dig myself into work i am such a a, a, a person who um i over function before christ i used to over function in pain so i would be very successful um, achieve a lot, you know, win every single award there is because I feel, I used to feel like that's where I have control. Um, I, 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 I do thank the Lord that he blessed me with some good brains. <laughs> so I would, I would basically use my intellect or my drive, my ambition to, to mask the pain. And, and that's, that was my main coping mechanism. And of course, going into worldly ways, um, you know, partying or clubbing or drinking, um, those were also things I would use to, at the time I didn't know, but now that I've come, I've seen the light, I'm like, whoa, those were not the best coping mechanisms, yeah. And how did you get out, how, how did you get out of all that chaos? I cannot take the credit for that. Um, one name, Jesus, yeah. What really happened that you had this U-turn? <laughs> what happened? So like I mentioned in my testimony, there were so many things that, I had to sit down and sort of review about my life. I found myself thinking about life in a very profound manner, and I was like, this cannot be it about life. You know, this, this, there has to be more. We can't just come to this life and, and suffer, whatever kind of suffering that may be for anyone, whether it's financial, health, heartache, betrayal. I'm like, no, you know, this, this can't be it. And what are some of the things that you actually had to let go as mm. a Michelle now who is born again? Definitely a lot of ingenuine and fake friends and relationships. And I'm so grateful that those are out of my life because those really steered me in a wrong path, to be honest, and also really broke my heart as well. So um, friends who are takers or who, you know, when you look back, you were always there for them, but they were nowhere to be found. And some even abandoned you at your lowest. Um, some even, you would never really know what you did to them. They were just, they just, you know, uh, left you. But that was the Lord doing that. Another thing is just a worldly lifestyle, you know, um, clubbing, partying, drinking, just to numb pain or as a f source of enjoyment. That for me, in fact, was such a radical shift 
it was just like I am not doing this anymore. It, it, there was just no fulfillment in that kind of lifestyle. It took you a while for you to come out and say this is who I am, this is a decision that I have made for me. Were you scared when you decided to, I'm going to delete everything on my social media, <laughs> you're going to start afresh? It's packed with a lot of uh, insight, like in terms of, uh, it forces me to share a lot. So the very first time I had the encounter with the Lord, I did not think I would get to this point of clearing up my entire Instagram and even sharing my testimony. Even if the Lord told me, you're going to share this testimony, I really wrestled with the Lord on that. I told him, no, I, like, I don't want to do this. If you watch my testimony, um, I was saying just like Esther or Moses or every other person who has been called Jonah, when he was told by the Lord, go and tell the people of uh, Nineveh that, you know, judgment is coming upon them if they don't turn away from their sin. And he went the other way and he was swallowed by a whale, right? By a fish. That was me. I was like, I'm not doing this. So by the time people are seeing a testimony out, they're just seeing the end result. They're just seeing the new Michelle, the cleaned up Michelle, a different Michelle, but it has been a journey. Who in your immediate circle did you share the news with your salvation? Yeah, yeah. definitely my mom and uh, if she's watching this she knows. How was her reaction? <laughs> How did she react? <laughs> she was so happy. She was overjoyed. She was over the moon. Um, we were together the the, that day. That day. We were together that day uh, before the Lord came to me. And I was telling my mom I was so broken. I was I was in a very uh, broken state. Obviously, that was the time I was hitting rock bottom. I'd, I'd hit rock bottom even. So I was just sharing with my mom about how I feel about this this world and just the way it's uh, it's it's a cold world out there compared. Even I was telling her mom like this world is nothing compared to the safety of being in in mom's nest, you know, and. She prayed with me and she was like, just keep praying to God. He has a plan for you, Michelle. Um, you're so special to me and I know God is going to bring you out of this. And Michelle, I'm going to ask you this question. And you're not the only person who are, the only female in Kenya who has been bullied online. Yeah. And it's usually mostly linked to sexual, oh, let's paint it, moral issues. Mm. What do you have to say about that? I have never been immoral in my life ever uh, anybody who knows me can attest to that if anything that has one of been my greatest fears as I mentioned we were really well brought up by my parents I think if you look at Michelle you can just tell um, the kind of person I am and uh, my parents well, my dad was very strict <laughs> growing up in a strict Catholic um, home so for me, immorality, really, um, in terms of promiscuity, and, and I can even say today on camera, promiscuity and fornication um, is not one of the sins the Lord showed me because he showed me visions of my sin. So fornication in the way we know it or promiscuity uh, was not one of the sins that the Lord showed me. So that whole conversation, I feel, is very... Um, unfair and detrimental to women especially women who have lived their life really well and and um, achieved their level of either success or whatever it is uh, you know with dignity yeah that's a woman like me I'm a dignified woman I have never been what people what some people are trying to um, paint me out to be so I think it's just the the would you call the quickest thing to attack a woman on and this is the thing about the society we live in no matter what good a woman does there will always be a conversation around her sexuality her, her lifestyle like come on i've come to christ how how do you um how do you attack that and and i've not come to christ to um to prove to anybody anything. Mm -hmm. As I said, I wrestled with the Lord even sharing this story. I did not even want to. I thought I would just get to um, social media and just be this new person, but the Holy Spirit kept convicting me, you have to say this story. So anybody saying, oh, you're just saying this so that now you can clean up your act or so that now you can uh, g uh, get married, it's, it's, Actually, it's, it's that laughable. Ha that, that's happening. And I'm like, how do you link these two together? It's very laughable. 
Yeah. I didn't look for Jesus. He found me. I didn't look for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he for found this one. Yeah. Speaking of which, I know Kenyans will want to know this question. Are you seeing someone? <laughs> I will not answer that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. You've had it for yourself. <laughs> she has said that she's not going to give us anything. Yeah. And you have to respect that. Yes. Cindy, yes. Michelle, yeah. I want us to talk about the next phase of your life. What should you this expect one. from you? <laughs> this this current one? Baby, what mm -hmm. should you expect from you? Should you be seeing more of you out there? Should you expect more content from you? Should you expect, because you had disappeared actually for a while. Yeah, I know. And you know, those, the, the, you have followers and fans actually, not even people who relate to you, people yeah. who relate to your content, and they might want to know if you should expect more of that from you. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm still in, in, in this season, and one of the things about coming to Christ is he, he makes you present. He, he gives you rest right he gives you rest you're not always thinking okay what's next what's next so first of all i'm just in this season of uh, coming out into the world that i'm born again so i want to enjoy this season for a while i don't know how long the holy spirit leads me each time like now michelle it's time to do this i'm very sensitive to the holy spirit very very sensitive so in this season it's about sharing my testimony it's, it's actually the lord sharing my story not even me mm -hmm. I can feel he wants to do something with my story. There's so much more to share, by the way, about that testimony. I can imagine condensing nine months into, I think, 52 minutes. There's a lot to share, which I will share in time. Uh, but in terms of the next phase, how I definitely see it panning out. For one, like I said in my testimony, everything I do will be for the glory of God and who I am, my 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 brains, my body, my beauty, my company, my influence, my every single thing, my relationships, my friendships, have to glorify God. Have to. That's something that I didn't do before Christ. I, 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 I didn't glorify him. And he still blessed me. So now, I, even, even if he does not give me that level of success or... or um, whatever it is it has to be for his glory he comes first so that's something to expect the second thing is there's there's definitely going to be a huge shift in my in my business uh, i cannot talk about it right now but there's going to be a huge huge shift when it comes to marini naturals that is god honoring now mm -hmm. perfect so in terms of anything else i would like to add i would just ask people to if you're not yet in christ if you don't yet know jesus know him for yourself for yourself don't don't wait for you know someone to tell you about jesus or of course there's always that initial touch point that you get to know about jesus and funny thing for me no one really ever ministered to jesus to me or preached jesus to me because um i guess maybe someone would say okay she's in the catholic faith she must be good but i would encourage you to um if you hear if a pastor tells you about jesus christ and and, and makes an altar call for example and you feel that you want to make a change in your life because we are all struggling with something. It's not just Michelle who's, who struggled with this sin or this addiction. We all sin. We're all sinners. The Bible says all have fallen short of God's glory. Not even one is righteous, right? So just because mine is in the public eye, it's, it's very easy to see me for my mistakes. But even you have yours. And even you want to make a change. So I would encourage you to seek Jesus for yourself. Get to know him for yourself and ask him, Lord Jesus, I want you to make a change in my life. Even if you're already a believer, even if you're already a Christian and you know you're struggling with this sin or this addiction or this lifestyle, rededicate your life to Christ. Get to know him afresh for yourself and he will turn your life around. I am living proof of that and I wish you well and I bless you.